we have no video. Don't say that. That was so good, too. It was. We're not going to be able to do that again. Hey, guys. Welcome to the Mo and O Show. This is going to be a special episode. <laughs> <laughs> Explain what happened. Uh, no. <laughs> you made the mess. You clean it All up. All right. So <laughs> I didn't record any video for this. This is, uh, I hit record, but apparently it was stuck in 4K mode. So it probably recorded about nine seconds of us and the rest is just audio. Because we are not meant for 4K, not with these faces. <laughs> I think the camera got scared. <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 egg heads. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to the Mo and O Show. My name is Omar Gonzalez. This is a podcast with friends. Uh, we talk tech, we talk photography. Today we're talking total photography. All photography, all the episode. And I'm Mo Morales, by the way. This is a podcast with uh, two people that don't have a grasp of the human language. What? <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> that are trying to entertain, but we come from a good place. We uh, enjoy each other's company and we decided to record and talk our, our experience with photography and tech and uh, movies and comics and stuff. But today we have a specific topic. We're going to talk about travel photography. Yeah, totally. Tips and tricks for travel photography. And we're going to share our experiences because you just came back from, man, New Orleans is awesome. Yeah, I went on a multifaceted business trip that ended up the last three days spending in, in uh, New Orleans or New Orleans. And it was a great time. Oh, a lesson for those. Yeah, I, I learned that you no one says New Orleans there. No. So don't even, they'll, they'll, sh hey, welcome to New Orleans. That's the equivalent of saying, I'm from Joyzy. Exactly. No one says, no one says Joyzy. Not from here. We don't say that. <laughs> we will kill you, actually, if you say that. Yes. Hey, how you doing? And we'd all, all, we don't all say, hey, how you doing? How you doing? Unless we're trying to be funny, but not, yeah, a, yeah. not a serious conversation. But New or it's, uh, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans is how they say it. But a uh, great place to travel. And it's a perfect uh, little microcosm for what we're going to talk about. It's got food, culture, great street photography opportunities. Um, what do you bring? Or maybe what you used to bring and what you bring now. All right. So with me on this trip, I took the A6300. It's the, so small. It's, a, it, it's got the um, 16 to 50 millimeter lens on it, which is the equivalent. Cheers. Salut. Clink with the Fuji X-T20. Which is the equivalent of a 24 to 70 millimeter, which this is the one I would normally have brought with me everywhere. And this is, oh my God, heavy. This is the uh, A50 with this 24 to 70 uh, millimeter. And as you can tell. A, those of you not, that are just listening, it's a Nikon uh, D850. It's Nikon's ginormous DSLR camera, really heavy. And just, just takes up a lot of space in your bag. It's heavy. Um, the Sony was a godsend. It was portable, quick. It it focused on a dime. The kit lens was amazing. I I also have a fifty one point eight with it, which mm, was delicious. butter with the bokeh. It was locked. It it hit focus points across the street at one point eight, locked on. Awesome. It, I mean, I was so impressed with it. Where it actually got me thinking about like, hey, do I like Sony more than I think I like Sony? You better stay away from that. Oh my, don't touch it with your fingers. <laughs> I think our number one tip is you have to think about weight and size of a camera. I feel that price-wise, a lot of people go for their first DSLR, which might be the Canon Rebel series or the Nikon, what are they, the 3000s? Uh, yes, the lightweight 3000s. Yeah, so those are great cameras. And I see people who are traveling always have those cameras, but you can get the same image quality from a tiny package. So if maybe you're getting into the game, don't be afraid of smaller cameras that you can bring with, you know, everywhere with you. So I recommend the Fuji X-T20, of course. I am like the poster child which, for this camera. Which am, on the trip, I saw either a Sony or a Fuji more than I saw a really? Canon or a Nikon. Wow. I was very shocked at that. If you go to where we were in New York, like by the World Trade Center area, I saw a lot of people with DSLR with the plastic kit lens. I mm. feel people are still buying those because the price point is great. Right. For 500 bucks, you can get a DSLR. And I think a lot of, since the mirrorless cameras are new and have a lot of great features and are hot right now, they're still in the eight to thousand to $1,500 range. So people are still buying DSLRs. That's kind right, of cause, right. They think that they're, they're still the more superior camera, which, exactly. which technically in some aspects they are. Totally. For, you know, crop to crop, depending on model to model, in entry level to mid level, all, they all vary. But I still think DSLR is the better camera at this point. Um, but that doesn't, it's not, that gap isn't as big as it once was. For sure. 
And I think also you just don't stick out like a sore thumb too. So if you're walking around with these tiny mirrorless cameras that are great for photography, you can you know, get better street photos. You can blend in a little bit more without this big camera, hey, I'm a tourist. So I think our first tip is just try to downsize. I have a pro DSLR that I use for work, but I love traveling with tiny. Just sometimes if it's not a, you know, we're going out to do photography exclusively, I like to walk around with this little 27 millimeter pancake lens and just have fun getting little parts of the city. Yeah. I mean, look at this. This is a 16 to 50. And, uh, yeah, it, mine's it, smaller. It's, it's That's something that you usually don't fight about. <laughs> <laughs> mine's tinier. But in this case, yeah. So, but it, yeah, I mean, just the fact that I was able to pick that, ca that camera up and point it and shoot it and get the results I wanted with not being noticed was amazing so what do you take with you when you go on these little uh vacations uh so what i love to wait wait, wait let me ask you this what did you use to oh, take with i was you? about to say that and, and that's why i put this here because um it's not this lens but it's the f4 version 70 to 200 canon i was so into zooming i love the compression of architecture and scenery i used to carry my dslr my canon dslr and this main lens, the 24 to uh, 105 mm. f4, this is a great travel lens. And I recommend having, uh, if, if you can only have one lens, I would recommend something that can do video well too. So this has image stabilization. It goes wide to 24 and 105, which is a better zoom than the 70, the usual 70 as a zoom. Uh, but this, uh, tons of our home movies came from this lens. And what f-stop is that? This is F4, right, right, which is totally fine. Yeah, Nikon has one. I was just trying to think. I think is they have Nikon has a, a, a F4 24 to 105 or 135. Either one. Look it up. It's an F4, and it's also got the yeah. image stabilization. So great travel lens. Like this is just. And I brought this to Costa Rica. My first time I went to Costa Rica when I went with the Canon and um, weather sealed and image stabilization all around her takes great pictures. People are not going to notice your lens from the photograph. No. So I think <laughs> if someone is like um, gear crazy, mm -hmm. they, they have a hang up with this lens. They're like, eh, it's not like a prime. It's not an F 2.8, that kind of stuff. No, if your picture sucks, no one's going to notice right. your lens. So I used to walk around with that everywhere and then this beast everywhere until 2017, which is when I started my YouTube channel. Uh, I started with the Fuji. I had the X100 series, mm -hmm. but that didn't have interchangeable lenses, so I never considered that as a travel camera. No, it was a 35 millimeter equivalent, right? Yeah, yeah. so I, I can't live with just one lens on travel. So the, the Fuji X-T20 is by far my highest recommended travel camera for its dials, buttons, look, feel. It does 4K. It does video. The lens that it comes with, has image stabilization so you can do uh, update videos on your vacation uh filmed new orleans in 4k with this guy you know the sony a6300 does the same thing right <laughs> it does just but it's saying. ugly just saying so i uh that's what i have now and i recently picked up the fuji xt2 because mm -hmm. it, it dropped in price and i love that that camera um it just it, it's kind of is a throwback like it doesn't have touch screen uh, the new X-T3 has a touch screen and is getting all the new features. But I almost wanted to like capture the moment of the X-T2, how it was such a beloved camera. Mm -hmm. So I picked it up. Awesome. And I'm not going to let it go. So so when your next vacation comes up, are you going to bring it along with you? Yeah, I'll bring two. They're so small, the cameras, that I'll bring the X-T2 and the X-T20. And I prefer the X-T20 because it's pocketable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and th for sure, they're good enough for everything I do on tra in travel. Yeah, from now on, the the A six thousand three hundred is going to be my travel camera. That's just a, it's just a lock, awesome. official, done. You should look into the A seven three, man. I think that you should get rid of this thing uh, and put it up for sale right now. It's on sale. <laughs> Get Moe's 850. <laughs> I mean, that thing is just so big. And, and like I said to, to Omar earlier today, it wasn't until I walked around with the A6300 for a week that I realized just how heavy the 850 and all its lenses was because I didn't know anything else, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every other point-and-shoot camera is a point-and-shoot camera, so I didn't think... And you're you know. a strong dude, man. Like, you lift. And like this, <laughs> this camera is just like, wow, it's so heavy. Why am I so weak? You could do these... these. Uh, yeah, like I do like wrist curls all wrist day. Wrist curls. <laughs> like a savage. All right, so camera bags. Uh, I prefer the messenger bags. Me too. I used to have a backpack that's like a sling that would swing around, but I felt like I wasn't using that. 
I have I have several backpacks. I my go to bag is still the the Think Tank Retrospective Ten. Nice. I still go with that. It's a messenger style bag. It has a, a flap that you can keep open or a flap that you can close. Because if you're in a rough neighborhood, you want to yeah. keep it closed. And it looks like a sort of business bag. Right. It doesn't look anything like a uh, photo bag. It just Tip looks number like, two: make your bag look like a junky bag. Yeah. Get the Nikon symbol off there. Get the Canon symbol off there. Get the Sony symbol off there. Anything that that says camera on it, take it off there because that's what people who are in the bad business of taking things are looking yeah, we for. We should talk about that a little bit. I used to gaffer tape the the logos like the 5D mark when I had the 5D mark 3, if I was on the street, I used to uh, just gaffer the gaffer tape all the logos, Canon 5D. That was a little overkill, but that's something you could do if you want to, you know, disguise your camera. But I think having a smaller, junky-looking camera That's exactly is what I was much just more effective. Say, that, that having this camera in my hand, I never felt like someone yeah, was the staring Sony's at are me. ugly. That's why. Hey, now! Oh, it burns. <laughs> so having that camera in my hand, it never felt like someone was looking at me to take it. Uh, so let's talk about theft a little bit. I was in Puerto Rico, and my dad and I parked our rent-a-car, walked out of the rent-a-car, and put our wallets in the trunk mm-hmm. to, quote, hide them. Went to the beach. We came back. Our window was smashed and the, the trunk was popped. And later oh. my cousin said, there are people in the trees. <laughs> he's not kidding. I'm like, don't be racist. No, no. No, no. no but he's no. serious. There's people actually hiding out, watching everything that tourists are doing. Yeah. Yeah, they watch you. They see what you're doing. And quote, wow, that, I was like, such such a great hiding place, the trunk. Uh, they smashed the window and they took our wallets. And how did you get home with no ID? No, oh, it was a pain in the butt. I man. can't imagine. Yeah, though this was pre nine eleven. So we, th- the funny story is, we made some junky, f- not fake IDs, but we made some standard like IDs at the local Puerto Rican downtown. <laughs> they were like laminated in an old laminator, and uh, they the we got through. We got through security. Today that would not happen. No so way. do not put your wallet in your trunk anymore. Yeah, so theft-wise, uh, you can mask your camera, you can get smaller cameras, and your camera bag really is an advertisement. Uh, don't show off your gear if you're somewhere that's a little shady. And also travel in groups, like have people with you. Travel in groups. Be smart, because um, in New Orleans, or New Orleans, New Orleans wherever, we, yeah, it's okay. wherever you go, you could take one left and be in a neighborhood you don't really want to be in. For sure. So those are, those are the kind of places where you want to be as inconspicuous as possible with your gear, your bag, and yourself. So don't be blinging out the gold. Don't be wearing those gold toothpicks out. Have your Sony G Master 9000 out there. Our tip number three is what to capture. Think about what you're going to do when you go to a place. So when I was going to New Orleans, I've never been there before. Uh, the first thing I did was, oh, sorry, our tip, we should give it a title. Our tip is um, be prepared. So one way to prepare is to like research your location. You don't want to go down there and, and have a non-waterproof camera kit in a rainy environment. Costa Rica. That Costa Rica. happened to me. I mean, I knew what I was getting into mm-hmm. and I brought a plastic bag, but it castle. rained <laughs> like beyond rain, like sideways rain. Oh. Little oh, stinging rain. <laughs> <laughs> Name that movie. I can't. Come on, man. I can't. Big old fat rain. Little old stinging rain. You, <laughs> you don't know that? Forrest Gump when he's in Vietnam. But, I was going to say that, but it just sounded too Forrest Gumpy. Oh, it was like so obvious yeah, that it wasn't like, obvious. Yeah. It can't be that one. Hey, even rain came in sideways. <laughs> Plus, I haven't seen that movie since it oh, first right. released. It's great a great movie. movie, though. Great movie. Back to travel. Uh, so the other thing I like to do is to see what other people have done somewhere. So you go on to like uh, Pinterest, Google, or... Like Paris, for example, Eiffel Tower. Okay. Uh, that one I research because it's like, come on. But where, like, where do you research? Do you go to... Just uh, Google Images. 500 pics. Google oh, images. forget. Don't go to 500 Don't. pics. You we already had this conversation. Yeah. You'll just put your camera down and walk away. <laughs> Jump out the window. It'll be like the scene from, um, was it Office? No, no, no. Um, never mind. <laughs> can't you ruin the joke by not knowing the, the movie um the That's, guy with the stapler oh yeah the uh office, office space. space office space so it's, it's like the scene from office space at the end when they destroy the printer if you go to 500 <laughs> pics that's gonna be you and your camera you'll be in Die, the mother brother not <laughs> boom boom yeah, yeah. Oh, i love yeah. that scene uh absolutely so i just did google images but paris eiffel tower because you can go, so many people have gone there and captured the eiffel tower you can kind of see what vantage points work because believe it or not, you don't need to be like right under the Eiffel Tower to get a great shot. You right. can be like near a cafe and you see it in the distance. Just use like a long, a long zoom lens. 
Although I wouldn't recommend bringing the 70 to 200 anywhere. Ultrasonic. Oh my God. It's like, I see you. I see everything. I know. Stop thinking because I can see it. Totally. I like to research and and get a sense for what other people have done. Not so much for, I don't want to do what they've done, but it gives you ideas. You want to do what works. Exactly. Because just because they took that picture, you didn't. And it's going to be in your collection, not theirs. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to duplicate what other photographers have done because not point ninety nine percent of the time you are replicating what someone's already done absolutely how can you even come up with something original right. so you there? just have to put your spin on it and when you show it off and when you put it up on your wall then you're just happy because that's your shot absolutely but like omar said find out what works before you get there so you don't waste your your time shooting on you know hip level upward at something that looks hideous so yeah and when you get very close to the apple tower for example it's so big and you didn't bring like you only have a 35 millimeter lens you may not be prepared so you have to think hey if i want this shot i'm going to need a wide lens or i can only do this blah 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 and let me give everyone whoever who's never been to new york city and is coming to new york city sometime in the future get yourself either over to Brooklyn or the New Jersey side of Manhattan because some of the best photography of, of, this, New, of York. New York City is not in New York City. Uh, you know, In Manhattan. Yeah, it's not in Manhattan, which you, is the main island. You can't, get, um, you can't get the skyline from within the skyline. You yeah, can't be right next to it. So sure. f- find your way to New Jersey or one of the other boroughs that give you a nice view depending on what view you're looking for. Yeah, I recommend you can walk across the Brooklyn Bridge. You can photograph the Brooklyn Bridge. And then on the other side, you can... Once you get to the other side, you can shoot over. You can take a quick furry, a ferry, a furry. <laughs> Big furry a, beast uh, called ferry. the Gremlin. You can take the ferry from you know 39th Street in New York City, take it over to Weehawken, and, and you can oh, amazing good. shots. Yeah. Amazing shots. Uh, as far as being prepared as well, um, we said lens choice. We said it's also time of day. Because if you're traveling like me, family, I have to prepare when I'm going to do photography. Because I have to set time aside if I want the best light. So you really have to get out there before your, you know, obligations, like right, work right. obligations. So what Omar's saying is that if he's going out and they're going to go see, for instance, if they're in New York City and they're going to go look at the, the world famous post office that's over there, he knows that if he wants really good shots, he could take a few while he's with the family, but he's going to have to come back out when the lighting is just right. You know, yeah. either a little later in the evening, first thing in the morning and get the right shots or depending on what kind of shots you look at. You know, Love that. Know, I, know the lighting for what the time of day it is. That's a great point. I don't that wasn't even on our list, but you, that tip, I lost count already, but it should be shoot very early in the morning or late at like during sundown to get the best light. So many people uh, contact me via the YouTube channel or Instagram and say, hey, can you look at my photos? And I've gone through their photos and I noticed through a lot of their good pictures, terrible lighting. Right. They're shooting at noon because that's when we're out. Right. That's what the people don't think about that. And if you're a fun photographer and you're seriously a fun photographer, these are things you want to think about. Like, when do I want to shoot this? Uh, once you get beyond snapshots, try to capture the flavor of a place. Right. So if you have like a little wall, it has like gumbo, trumpet player, you know, the square. You have a sense, a feel for the culture. When you get home and you look at the photos that you just took, you want to remember it. You yeah. want to relive feel it. it. You don't want to be like me and Susan taking this picture <laughs> by and, this railing that by could this be railing anywhere. And like, oh, is that New York? Is that New Orleans? Is yeah, that Brooklyn? Know. Where is it? Where'd you take this picture? I don't remember because it's so like the rest of my other pictures. So you <laughs> want to make sure you take pictures that are going to allow you to re- relive, remember the the vacation. So another thing that very important um, as a tip, and we're not keeping numbers anymore, so this is just this another is 19. tip, 19 Alpha Bravo 74. <laughs> it, it just necessarily, it's necessary to... See, no grasp of the human language. <laughs> and bring it with me today. <laughs> so it's very important to have an idea of how you're going to back up your images. For instance, this is my backup plan. So when I started doing... Um, even when I took the 850, the 800, the, the 5,000, 7,000, whatever I had, obviously it was always a compact. I'm sorry, it's always an SD card. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I did was purchase one of these Apple adapters. It's SD to Lightning adapter. And I would upload my photos instantly every night onto my iPad because I didn't have an iPhone back then. Great. And I, now I put them on my iPhone. Or if it has Wi Fi, I automatically move them over to my iPhone That's or iPad. Right. Uh, travel wise, our tips for the most part are. Go small, especially if you're hiking. If you're walking around all day, it's great to have a small kit. To set time aside for photography. Research your location. 
and the weather, the what kind of stuff you're going to need. Are you going to need wide angles? Are you going to be okay with just short primes? Good. That's it. <laughs> Abrupt ending into my statement. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to like bounce back and forth, but it's cool. It's cool. Back up your photos. Make sure you have the right bag. Don't stick out like a tourist because you become a target. Uh, and I think the last one we didn't really talk about is uh, what are you capturing? Like, what's your goal as a photographer when you travel? When I travel, uh, my main thing is if I'm going to some place that's scenic, I want to capture wide angle totally. what's going on. If I'm going to be in a city somewhere, New Orleans, for instance, I want the city feel the girt, the, the girth, the dirt, the feel. <laughs> there was some girth. I mean. Yeah, there was. Oh my. So anyway, um, yeah, no, I I want. I want the feel of the place wherever I am. That's overall sentiment is if I'm looking at something landscapish like the Grand Canyon or if I'm in El Paso or if I'm in the city, whatever that city is about, yeah, whatever that location is about, that's what I want to bring back home with me. Absolutely. That feel that like, you know, the flavor that and you know what? You should try to try to print your work, put it in a book, put it in a calendar. It's great to see all this stuff later instead of having them in the cloud or hard drive. Super key point. In 2018, or as Oma would say, 2018, 2018. Um, there's no one printing stuff. This is stuff that you're photographing. Stop swiping through your phone. Take a few minutes to have it print it make a book man it's very beautiful put it on your coffee table someone's like oh what's that oh that's my trip to uh, here office. i'll show you right now hold on <clears throat> okay i'm back uh this is a fineo book that i made fineo. this was my wife and i's 10th anniversary in san francisco area so california i made a photo book and i gave it to her and it it basically you look at it they're not i don't care but it has the vineyards in there very nice. And here, here's oh, a oh, check look this at those out. Sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's a perfect. I'm not a fat man. Here's a perfect example. This this little valley right here. We had the best sandwiches in the world, and that's what the spread was about: having wine and sandwiches, vineyards. Anyway, buddy, that was great. That we was stuck awesome. to one topic mostly. <laughs> if you have any travel tips, leave them below for other people because I love our community. They yes. give back. Yes. So people share and take from each other. Well, that doesn't sound right, but oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't. <laughs> Bye, All right, guys. Be good. All right, see ya. Bye. -bye. <laughs>